Good morning and welcome to Uplift with Cliff. Uh, I think it's what now? The 17th of August and we are live here today on Uplift with Cliff. Um, let me see here. Do I have everyone here? People are coming in now. How many of you all are excited about life? Excited to be back. It's 9.30 a.m. It's Monday morning, August 17th, and this is Uplift with Cliff. So, uh, we're going to get started here in a minute. We're going to give people time to roll on in. I should let you in five minutes early, but I'm sorry I didn't. So I'm excited to hear from everybody today. I'm excited to be back today. I know a lot of people were turned off by the fact that we did not broadcast last week, but uh, I'm sorry. I was traveling. I was in California. Uh, first real vacation I've had in a long time. And um, I went out, I went hunting, me and a childhood friend of mine who is a uh, my day one as we say today, uh, I've known him for over 30 years. Uh, and we were out in the mountains of California. We went boar hunting. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And so um, we went uh, boar hunting and just got lost in the woods, got lost in the mountains. And um, it was a beautiful thing, let me tell you. So uh, as we get ready to get started, uh, now my computer's telling me that uh, Uplift is on. Yes, yes. So, as we get ready to get started. Uh-oh, hold on. Let me get you guys a little Wi-Fi going on. Got something I want to talk to you about today. Something that's uh, on my mind and something that I really have been saving to get to you guys with. Um, come on, computer. Come on. All right. You don't want to connect to this Wi-Fi today? If we don't connect, it'll be okay. Um, so, um, come on, connect for me. There we go. Where's Aura Wi-Fi? There it is. Come on. You know you want to connect. So, it's 932. This is Uplift with Cliff. Yes, the people are coming on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. And we'll dismiss that. All right. All right. All right. Come on. We'll dismiss that too. Come on. Connect for me. So how many of you guys are excited about having a great week? There you go, come on. There you go. Now we're connected, now we're connected. Okay, I see you sharing things, Keela Long. I see you guys now, people are sharing that it's on. Good job, good job. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right, so. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the August 17th edition of Uplift with Cliff. If you haven't already, shoot your texts, your emails, uh, your shares out there. Let everybody know that we're back on the air. I'm rested, tested, and ready to be invested in your life again. So as I mentioned earlier, I spent a lot of time this past week in the mountains of California. I was out there hunting with one of my childhood friends, and we were having a great time uh, getting away both of us uh, really love our jobs. He's a television producer, very successful gentleman, and I am a realtor CEO. And I told him, I don't care what you think or how great you think your job is. You may be walking around with movie stars and writing movies. I get to work with realtors. I love my people. I absolutely love working with realtors. And today, as you guys know, the whole purpose of Uplift with Cliff is to try to not just coach you or help you through business situations, but personal situations as well. Because what we have found out is that most of the time, it's the personal situations that are interfering with your business situation. And the reason that your business situations aren't working for you is because you've got one or two little personal quirks that you need to get rid of that are keeping you from prospering. So 
What we're going to talk about today is something that I know you've never heard about. I know you've never heard about it. And if you have, well, then you're smarter than me and that didn't take much. But it's something called Solomon's Paradox. Solomon's Paradox. Now, this is something that uh, it's a little deep today, but when I explain it, it's going to make plenty of sense. So tell your friends, tell everybody, you're going to be able to help diagnose people and their problems, but more importantly, you're going to be able to deal with your issues more so, and it's going to affect your business and cause you to be more successful in your businesses. Now, Solomon's Paradox. Before I can go into what Solomon's Paradox is, first I have to define who is King Solomon? King Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever lived. Um, he actually did live, he was a historical figure. I tried uh, sometimes to stay away from biblical things because uh, so many people, um, uh, you know, are, are the chat's blowing up there, okay? Because so many people, um, you know, are polarized by it. But let's just talk about Solomon the man and not Solomon the biblical figure. So King Solomon was the third leader of the Jewish kingdom. Uh, and he was thought to be one of the wealthiest and smartest and wisest men to ever live. Um, people used to travel great distances just to talk to Solomon because when he gave advice, he really gave advice. Now, how many of you guys have that person in your life that, um, gives really great advice. It may be you, it may be a grandmother in a boiler, it may be someone that you know. But so, many of us have that person in our life that we turn to for advice. King Solomon was that man. People would literally travel from other nations, other countries to talk to Solomon. Um, but what is not remembered well or much about King Solomon and his wisdom was that his personal life was pretty shabby. King Solomon, when it pertained to you, I'm just going to call him Solomon because this is Solomon's paradox. It's a psychological term. When it, as it pertains to you, he could give the very best advice ever. But when it came to his own life, oh my God, his personal life was in shambles. He couldn't do anything for himself. So how many of you guys know somebody that, man, they give great advice, but it just seems like when it comes to them, they keep on going back into that same old situation over and over and over again, and they can't help themselves. So that's what's called Solomon's Paradox, the ability to give great advice, but not follow your own advice. The ability to, oh, she can see the problem in your man, but she can't see that her man ain't really her man. He's everybody's man. Oh, he can tell you how to spend your money, but he's living check to check. He's on a YouTube video telling you how to invest and what to invest in. But if you were to go to his house, he's living out the back of a Honda Accord, washing his clothes at your house while you at work. So many people can give great advice, but they can't live it themselves. And this is why when we're in our businesses, we can sit down. It doesn't matter whether it's Buffini or whether it's Josh Altman. You can sit down with the very best of coaches. But when you go home and try to apply it, doesn't work for you. You can see other people. You can tell this or that person exactly why uh, their leads aren't working. You can tell them how to get on the phone and how to actually work and call people up. And if you were calling the lead for them to say, hi, my name is so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. Oh, honey, you would kill it. But when it comes time for you to sit down and do these things on your own, you just can't get there. You can't seem to get motivated. Can't seem to get up. This is Uplift with Cliff. It's 9.38 a.m. August the 17th. We're about to cure some lives. I'm about to help somebody today. I want to help all of these people that are within the sound of my voice, all my uplifters. We're going to get rid of Solomon's paradox in our lives today. We're going to be able to follow through on our own advice cure ourselves, and help everybody around us to also be successful, okay? So this is Solomon's paradox, the ability to help others, but you cannot help yourself. So King Solomon, he always made bad decisions 
continuously made bad decisions, repeatedly made bad decisions. He had uncontrolled passion. Oh my God, he loved money. He loved women. Solomon had over 700 wives and he neglected to teach his only son how to be king. So how many of us know that, oh gosh, we are awesome at what we do. People love us, but man, we're not really doing good with our own children. Hmm. I can say that, hey, I, I haven't been the best father at times. Sometimes we, we haven't, we're doing bad in our own business. Hmm. So often I can tell folks how to run their business, but mine's in shambles. I sometimes, I'm so thankful for my staff because without staff, you see the real cliff. So many times, we can do things for others, but we can't do it for ourselves. And Solomon was one of these people. He he could run the kingdom. He was he could do all these things. But man, his own passion for money and women, he could do nothing for himself. One more time, how many of us can give great advice to others, but when it comes to our own lives, we don't always do so well? See, it takes a real mature person to be able to admit that. But see, in the 21st century today, you don't have to continue to suffer from that. And that's the point of Uplift with Cliff, to help you pass these moments in your life that keep you from being the best you that you can be. So today, I'm going to give you a solution for Solomon's paradox in your life to help you to be able to see things more clearly and to make better decisions with the things that you're looking at. Do we really think more wisely about other people's problems than our own? The answer is yes. It's a scientific fact. But why? Do we really think more wisely about other people's money, other people's businesses, other people's clients, other people's listings, other people's relationships? Do we really think more wisely about those things than our own? The answer is yes. And I'm getting ready to tell you why. So, it's all about perspective. Yes, perspective. See, scientists found out this little fact. Okay, I'm getting ready to blow your mind. You ready? People say that wisdom comes with age. Yes, it does in many cases. But what people also forget and what they don't know is that wisdom, true wisdom, comes from perspective not age. It comes from perspective and not age. The ability to discern and make the correct decision for you in your life has nothing to do with age. Age is just a measure of rehearsal as it, as it, as it pertains to making um, bad decisions. How many times did you rehearse it? But perspective can change everything in your life with regards to how you make decisions. So it is possible for you to use perspective to change Solomon's paradox. I know what you're saying, Cliff, how do we do that? Cliff, what do we do? Cliff, how are we gonna use perspective to change everything? Okay, get ready, get ready, get ready, here we go. So, um, is it possible to help distance yourself from your problem? Yes, and what I want you today to do, it's 9.43 a.m., is I want you to stop looking at your problem. Pretend that you're in one of those TV movie scenes. We need to go from first person to third person perspective. You see, stop right where you are. Take that deep breath. Think about who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. Now, I want you to transport yourself in your mind out of your body and sit next to yourself. Yes, you're sitting here and you're looking at me, but close your eyes and let another version of yourself sit right next to you. Picture two of you sitting next to each other, looking at each other. Now, that you are the first person. The person next to you is the third person. Now, you are no longer looking at yourself as yourself, but I want you to look at yourself as the third person. And the reason that we're doing this is because you need to look at yourself as if someone else is looking at you. Now, here we go. I know I confused you a little bit. 
in the th I want you to go from first person perspective to third person perspective and say instead of asking yourself why do I feel this way I want you to look at yourself and say why does he or she feel that way Instead of saying, hold on, you're getting it, you're getting it, I see the lights going off. Instead of saying, why am I like this? I want you to look at yourself and say, why is she like that? And when you begin to look at yourself in that third person, you can begin to diagnose why she keeps doing what she's doing. So you're saying to yourself, why am I like this? Why do these things keep happening? But the third person of you is looking at yourself saying, why does she keep doing that? She's saying, the other person that's looking at him is saying, why does she keep dating those guys? Can't she see he's wrong for her? Why is she with that broker? They don't even think alike. Why, I can tell what's going on. You see, as the first person, you can't see yourself the way that you should be able to. But in the third person, what we're trying to do, this is a little trick in Solomon's Paradox, we're changing the perspective before before you make that bad decision. Oh, yeah, you guys are blowing up. I see you, Andrew. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's my franchise player right there. So, yeah, in Solomon's Paradox, what it's all about is when you're getting ready to make that major move in your life, you can't, you've got to jump out of the first person and into the third person and take a good, long look at yourself and determine whether or not you're about to make the right move, not as yourself, but as someone else looking at you. So Solomon's paradox, the ability to make good decisions for everyone else, but not yourself. So go from the first person perspective to the third person perspective. Instead of asking, why do I feel this way? Ask yourself, why does he or she feel that way? And stay, okay, here's the big thing, and stay in the third person as you evaluate your moves before you make that move. See, it's easy for other people to tell you what's right and wrong for your life because they're not living it. They're on the outside looking in and they don't have any more age than you have. What they have is perspective. They have a different perspective on your life, a different perspective on your history of decisions, a different perspective on what's right and what's wrong. You see, you become clouded by excitement. You become cl clouded by fear. You become clouded by enthusiasm. You become clouded by romance. You become clouded by all these thoughts. But the third person you that can look at you and say, girl, you don't even like to wake up in the morning. Girl, you don't even shout. Hour. Girl, you don't even know how to cook, but why are you getting ready to buy that oven? Girl, you know you don't even... That person that's looking at yourself knows you're getting ready to make a huge mistake. So, Solomon's Paradox is what we're talking about today. Changing the perspective. Wisdom has nothing to do with age. Wisdom has everything to do with perspective on today and if you can just i'm getting excited y'all if you can just master perspective you can go through this life life being absolutely awesome in what you do how many of you all are catching on to that today uplift with cliff it's 9 48 i got about two more minutes to keep on going okay 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 you will be able to analyze yourself and make changes this is going to cure you of making bad decisions repeatedly and break those cycles or as some of y'all call them generational curses in your life because you will you're not going to have the wisdom of age yet but you can use perspective right now to change absolutely everything so this is what we're going to find out age is great but perspective is everything experts found out when they did the research that age did not make as great a difference as perspective you have got to change the perspective in your life and how you look at things before you make that decision i want you to go through this exercise with me for a second imagine yourself as an observer in your life. Imagine yourself as an observer in your life. You are watching yourself on the boat of life. 
You're watching yourself as you go through life. You're an observer. I want you to now imagine yourself observing your business and your business decisions. Is that the right decision? Is that the wrong decision? Why did he or she make that decision? You can go all the way back when you start, when you really learn to master perspective, you can go all the way back into, she's only doing that because their children walked out or her husband walked out and that's getting ready to affect how she chooses her broker. She's not going to make that phone call because she hated that job or he hated that job when he worked in a call center a long time ago. So why he's signing up to buy a thousand leads and make a thousand phone calls? We don't know because Cliff has a history of not liking to be on the phone. Don't get hyped up by the moment. Start using the paradox of you looking at you to make the decision before you make it. Start to use the paradox. You're looking at yourself not in and excited by the moment, but as an observer. I want you to start observing your business from the third person and not the second. Take a step back and really look at your business and really study why you did what you did. And you're gonna observe that some of the business, business decisions you make, they go way back to things that you did in college. But you can't do that right now because you're so hyped up by the decision. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna open an office, I'm gonna have have 20 ages. I'm going to I'm going to make a million year. I'm going to go sell go to note. But the other person next to you knows, girl, you ain't even got gas money. <laughs> now I know I'm being funny, but the other person to you knows, sir, you're kind of late on your child support. Now you get ready to open up a new business. You see, I'm hitting you with real things right here. Yeah, I know that just stung. I'm not trying to touch anybody. I'm talking about my life right here. But I'm talking to real people here. You can do things if you truly understand what your limitations are and what you will and will not do. Don't get hyped up by the internet at night. You know you ain't about to do those push-ups. Look, I bought a push-up machine the other day, y'all. It was the one where you do the push-up and you bring your arms in and spread them out. Then you do another one. Now I know I had a bad shoulder. But I got hyped up by the TV. But if the other Cliff had just sat there and looked at me getting ready with my phone to buy, he would have said, Cliff, you don't even like doing push-ups. You'll go to the gym, but you ain't going to do no exercise at home. I forgot that I was dealing with me. I bought a $109 piece of equipment that I soon sold up on Let Go or Offer Up on one of them sites or eBay. But... If I had just looked at myself, I would have made that decision because a little self-analysis would have told me, Cliff, you don't even like to do this. So, I want you to look in the third person. Imagine yourself as an observer in your relationships. Why does she keep choosing those same men? Why does he keep going for those women? He knows she's married. He knows that woman is me. Why does he keep going after her? Why does my child keep on uh, chasing these kids, knowing that these kids aren't really their friends? You see, you've got to get in that third person mindset and really observe. And then you'll be able to make your little checklist. And then when you get back in your right mind, you'll, you will start making a history of good decisions because you'll limit the bad decisions. I, ho I hope that just hit home. You'll start, you'll develop a history of good decisions because you'll start limiting the bad decisions and your life will start going in the direction that you wanted to go in. I want you to imagine yourself as an observer to your finances. Hey, look, you can't get took, hooked and crooked every time. You have to learn how to save finances. So before you decide, oh my God, look at this new Mercedes, look at this new house. Yes, I need a third Louis Vuitton purse. Oh my God, hey, I gotta have some more gators. Yes, I'm getting ready to go get this or that. I'm getting ready to go buy this Jeep. This Jeep is gonna make me more of a man. Yes, when I go join the gun club, women are gonna love me. Before you start lying to yourself, about all these things. I'm going to grow me a beard and I'm going to become like Tom Selleck when I get a big mustache. Before you start lying to yourself, look at yourself and say, you don't even make the bed. Look, car payment, you're barely making the car payment you're making now. Just because you can buy it don't mean you can afford it, Cliff. You're going to do what? You're going to join the gym? Really? You don't even like to walk to the refrigerator. You call your kids and ask them to bring you the grapes. If you will start looking at yourself from the third person 
Instead of always being caught up in the moment, you will start making better business decisions. This is Uplift with Cliff. It is 9.54 a.m. And I'm getting ready to transition today. It's time for us to do a few of our affirmations. Yes, we're going to do some affirmations on today. And when we make these affirmations, we're going to vow to look at ourselves in a different perspective. We're going to vow that we're going to do better um, with ourselves. We're going to vow that we're going to take a step back and look at ourselves using Solomon's paradox in the third person before we make those bad decisions. I'm trying to help a couple thousand people this week to start making good decisions in their life. I want you guys to pledge to me that you're going to take this and forward it and share it with some people who you know who consistently make bad decisions. Now, don't go tell them Cliff said you make bad decisions, so you got to watch his show. Don't do that, please, because they won't watch me. And furthermore, I get a lot of hate mail sometimes, depending on the topic. No, I want you to share it with people who are going through something in their life. There's a dilemma going on, and they're not really certain about what move to make next. The people who are thinking about changing companies, the people who are going through divorces, the people whose kids are doing this, you need to share this with them today because they need to stop and pull back real quick before they make that decision and look at themselves from the third person and make that checklist about who they are and then go back and make that decision. We can do that today. But before we do it, it's 9.55 a.m. and I got to be on time because I got to be on the seminar for NAR today. We're going to do some affirmations. I want you to look at me today. Let's talk to each other. Let's talk to ourselves, uplifters. Let's go. I want you to say, hey, this is going to be my best week ever. Say it with me. Say it with me. This is going to be my best week ever. Yes. Now say this. Say this. I am an awesome mother. Yes. I am an awesome mother. Say, I am an awesome father. I am an awesome father. And my children love me. And my children love me. Say this. I am an awesome broker or realtor. I am, in, I am a great broker or you got to say it listen i can't say it for you when i say it it's acting when you say it it's confirming baby Woo! listen you got to say i'm an awesome realtor i am an awesome realtor say hey listen god loves me and i love god god loves me and i love god you know my signature you got to say hey i'm the best you ever met i'm the best you ever met can you help me sell my home? Yes, I can help you sell your home. Say it with me. Say it with me. Say, I am an entrepreneur. Say it. I am an entrepreneur. Say, I am a successful businesswoman. Say, I am a successful businesswoman. Say, I am a successful businessman. I am a successful businessman. Say, things go right for me. Things go right for me. Say, things are going to go my way this week. Things are going to go my way this week. Say, I expect good things to happen to me. I expect good things to happen to me. Say, things are going to happen for me and everyone in my family. Good things. Good things are going to happen to me and everyone in my family. Say, I am an overachiever. No more underachieving. I am an overachiever. Say, I am confident in myself. I am confident in myself. Come on, come on. You've got to affirm these things. You've got to speak this into your existence or it won't exist at all. You see, I can't uplift for you. You got to uplift for you. I can get you in the game, but you got to play it, girlfriend. You got to play it, homie. So you got to say, I'm the coach, the player, and the quarterback. I will be successful this week. Say it to yourself. I will be successful this week. Confirm it. I will have new clients this week. I will have new clients this week. I'm the best CEO you ever met. I'm the best CEO you ever met. I'm the best AE you ever met. I'm the best AE you ever met. You've got to say it. You've got to say it. You've got to believe it. You've got to make these things happen in your life. This has been Uplift with Clef, and this is the, it's 9.58 a.m., and let me tell you, let me see, where's my volume right here? Let me get my people going here. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Come on, play for me. Oh, she's acting up right now. So, it is 9.58 a.m. Now, listen, this week is going to be a great week. I, I can't give all my shout-outs this week because, um, uh, I, 
I've got to get on this call with NAR. So uh, me and Natalie Aerosmith getting ready to broadcast nationwide to a couple thousand CEOs and presidents. We're going to tell them what it's like to be in Orlando. But right now, I need you to remember this. Uplift with Cliff, starting next week, is going to be broadcast on YouTube as well. Yes, there's an Uplift with Cliff YouTube channel. I told you we're getting ready to make some difference. Look for the website. It's coming soon. We're getting ready to broadcast out to the nation. We're getting ready to change the game. Not just Orlando, not just Singapore, not just Thailand, not just Brazil, not just Panama, not just California, not just Raleigh, not just Miami, and not just New York. Uplift with Cliff is going to go worldwide here very soon on YouTube. So next week, get ready because we're going to expand our horizons. And I want the uplifters, you and you and you and you and you and you. I want all the uplifters help us change lives because the advice I give is going to be the advice you give. And together, together, together. We're going to change this world. I always knew we could. I love you. President Reese loves you. President-elect Natalie Aerosmith loves you. Y'all be good now, okay? Bye-bye.